So, uh, good morning. Let's uh, continue uh, where we left off uh, last lecture, the end of last lecture, about um, rolling essentials. So we're, we're, we're not trying to go through a theory. We're just trying to um, highlight a few things that are relevant, that are of importance, uh, as they may impact uh, the design of the mill stands and, and impact the uh, product uh, quality. Um, and also to give you an, uh, a feeling for numbers involved in the um, processing, strip processing. So, um, so important here um, in relation to the choices between um, whether you go for two high mills rather than four high mills in terms of reduction, you can see that if you have the same uh, thickness uh, reduction, the, uh, the bite angle, so this angle alpha here, um, will be much larger when you use uh, smaller angles. And uh, so if, um, uh, if, if you want to achieve um, high um, uh, amounts of reduction, yeah, it, it also means that uh, you will have to, you know, d d having enough friction is important. Hmm? Uh, and uh, if you uh, if you are uh, thinking of uh, uh, rolling thick strip, hmm? um, the uh, you, you therefore tend to to move toward uh, rolls with uh, larger diameter. So that's what you also see in the mill stands as you go from hot rolling to cold rolling is the, the uh, diameters uh, re, uh, being reduced of the rolls. Hmm? And these are typical things that happen that, uh, within, the, um, within the roll gap. Here you have two different uh, rolls are, um, are used here. Hmm? Uh, to, uh, to achieve a, a certain reduction, right? Uh, if you have a larger roll, you have, of course, a larger uh, contact area, yes? As you can see here, the, the red line, then with the, uh, the blue uh, work roll, yes? Um, and uh, a smaller uh, separation force, but also a smaller reduction. Good. So, um, can, can we get some numbers here? Yes, we can. Uh, there, there are some uh, formulas out there that allow you to, to do quick calculations of uh, what the uh, mean roll pressure will be. Yes, so that's, that's as, as you know, you can see it here. The, the roll pressure is not, so the pressure along this uh, contact uh, length is not constant, it, it changes, and you go through this maximum here, the friction uh, hill maximum. Hmm? So, but you can, you can get a mean value of this pressure, and that's, that's given by this um, uh, formula here, yes? This formula here, okay? And so what you see is that this mean pressure is proportional to the strength of the material at the temperature where you do the rolling, and then a parameter Q, yeah? All the other parameters, this parameter Q, all the other parameters are numerical uh, parameters, and this parameter Q is given by this simple formula here, uh, friction coefficient times contact arc length divided by the mean thickness in the roll gap, so the uh, that what's the mean thickness? That's the entry thickness and the exit thickness divided by two. Hmm? And so the, uh, the actual uh, hmm? rolling load is, is rolling load is then nothing else than this uh, mean roll pressure. So this is the mean roll pressure multiplied with the width of the, uh, the strip and multiply with the contact length, yes? 
and, uh, and, and so we, we know what the contact length is. Remember, that is the square root of the radius of my roll times the uh, reduction in thickness. So what, w one of the things you see is the pressure, hmm, the, the, excuse me, the rolling load is a function of the roll radius, yes? Hmm? So the higher you're rolling, uh, your rolls, the higher your rolling pressures will be, and the, the proportionality is square root of the uh, uh, roll radius. Hmm? And of course, there is also uh, an effect of the strip uh, thickness, and you can show that, if, if you look at this formula, that the load will increase as, th as you get thinner strip. Hmm? Okay. Okay. So, um, again, rolling load increase with, uh, by square root of three, uh, square root of r, excuse me, and the, uh, it also increases with the thinner strips. Hmm? So that at very small uh, roll, uh, at, at very thin strips, yes, the, uh, the deformation can be so high that it's, it becomes extremely difficult to, to reduce the, the, um, the strip thickness any further, yes? And uh, actually that happens quite often, and in, in those cases we will, and for instance in cases of electrical steels, thin plate, where we do very thin um, uh, packaging steel, we will use very small diameter rolls, yes, uh, which are stiffened by multiple back up rolls, because when, when the rolls become very small, yes, they will have a tendency to easily bend, so you have to have all these multiple uh, uh, backup rolls, and you can see here these uh, cluster mills are used for uh, this purpose. Hmm? All right. Mm -hmm. So let's let's have a, an example, a calculation example. So you, so you're familiar with the use of these formulas if, if you wish to use them. So say you have a 40 millimeter bar, four centimeters, yes, and it's reduced by 30 percent. Yes, in a mill, so that would be a finishing mill, the first stand, yes, and the mill has a diameter of uh, 800 millimeters, 400 uh, uh, millimeters uh, uh, radius. Hmm? The strip has a width of uh, 1400 millimeters, yes, and you have a friction coefficient 0.2, high friction coefficient. Hmm? The uh, material we are rolling is say a carbon steel, yes, and uh, at a temperature of about a thousand degrees C, where you do the rolling for, uh, yeah? so this would correspond to something like a thousand degrees C. Yeah, that's where you typically start rolling uh, a bar, yes, um, and of course uh, the material cools, yes, and say the exit. Uh, strength of the material is 150 megapascal. All right, so with this data, I can derive what the exit thickness is. Yeah, I know it's the reduction is 30 percent. So using the simple formula here, change in thickness divided by the original thickness times 100 is 30 percent. I can determine that uh, the exit thickness is about uh, 30. Uh, millimeters, so that gives me a mean thickness in this of the strip during the deformation, a, a mean thickness of 35. Yeah. In entry 40, exit 30, 35 is the mean thickness, and a reduction of thickness of about uh, 10 millimeters. Okay, what is the mean strength of the material? Well, 100 and, and Entry, 115 exit, so 125 will be uh, in the neighborhood. Yeah. Then I calculate my numerical uh, factor here, Q, friction time contact length divided by the mean thickness. Yeah. And I, for the contact length, you know I have to take the square root of radius times thickness difference. So I plug in all these numbers and I find point. 
34 for my the Q value. So uh, this is then very simply plugged into the formula I just showed you for uh, the P, hmm, the load, hmm, and I find, it's really straightforward, 14.6 mega newtons. Hmm, and um, I often add uh, pounds um, data on my slides for, for people who are uh, wouldn't be familiar to Newtons. Uh, okay, so 14.6, what does this correspond with? Hmm, with? With this physical rolling force, say it's about 15, 14.9 uh, is uh, 15 uh, mega Newtons. Mega means 10 to the sixth, so 15 million Newtons. Yes, and that corresponds, would correspond to uh, uh, having a pressure here of about 306 elephants because one elephant typ typically weighs five tons. Five tons is 5,000 kilograms force. Of course, we don't use kilogram force, we use Newtons, yes? Uh, so that's 49,000 Newtons, right? And so that's how you, so it's a considerable amount of elephants um, that um, will give you this. Now, the, um, this uh, force, th these newtons, yes, uh, will of course determine the power that you need to install to have to do the rolling, right? Uh, so that, and, and it's provided, we'll see this uh, via torque on the, the, the rolls, yes? So this, the total power that you need to install is of course the uh, sum of friction power, yeah? you need the tension power, there may be tension on the strip, yeah? uh, the deformation power, which we just calculated, and there will be also, there can also be losses. Hmm? So um, the uh, just deformation only is, is not, uh, basically gives you a basic value of the, the power you have to provide um, to roll the material. Hmm? So again, uh, some, some typical numbers here, so you, so you have a, a good physical feeling for uh, uh, what, what happens in a hot strip mill. And yeah. For instance, here, um, we're looking at uh, some calculations for a, uh, a stainless steel. It's austenitic, yeah? stainless steel at 1,000 degrees C. And, we, and we're rolling uh, with uh, rolls of a radius of 200 to 300, uh, 400 uh, centimeters. Strip widths are of the order of a meter or slightly smaller, often larger. And, um, and this is, would be a typical reduction. You go from uh, four millimeters to three millimeters. Okay, and, and you can calculate, yes, uh, what, uh, what the, um, uh, uh, um, pressure distribution is in the roll gap and you can see here so uh, you, you see the friction hill here right and obviously if I increase the friction coefficient yes I will see an increase in uh, this friction hill hmm? so with increasing friction I see that the uh, the pressure the rolling pressure is increased the torque that I provide is increased, and I also see that the uh, the exit speed of the strip uh, is also increased. So you know that the exit speed is is not uh, the surface uh, uh, velocity of the rolls, but can be larger. Hmm? And um, you can see what is the what the effect is of larger roll diameters. Yes, hmm? if you. Uh, larger roll diameter in this direction, yes, you can see. Um, you know that uh, the, 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 the force that you need is proportional to the square root of R, right? So you, you see that the, the pressure increases and the torque increases, yes? Uh, uh, there are ways to, uh, are there ways, excuse me, to reduce the um, uh, the uh, the load, the rolling load, yes, and 
that is to apply tension, either forward tension or back tension. And you can see here that as you apply increased tension on the strip, the rolling load decreases, yes? And you can see also the friction hill decreases as you uh, apply tension to the strip. Um, if you apply a, uh, a forward tension, obviously the strip will move even faster as you pull it out uh, of the, the mill. If you apply a backward tension, yes, you pull it back, the velocity of the strip, exit velocity decreases. And that, that explains why S decreases here. And of course, if you do larger reductions, you will have the... Uh, uh, rolling, uh, the rolling uh, load, uh, see the rolling load increase. Okay. Yes, yeah, so th these are some uh, similar data, but um, in inches. So, um, so let's let's just um, just for the, um, the heck of it, uh, look at some numbers here. Yes, uh, and, and these are from a cold mill. We look at five stands. You have so five rolling stands, yes? And each stand has its specific uh, work roll diameter, right? So you see relatively, s now it's uh, about uh, 280 millimeters uh, diameter uh, of the rolls. The uh, speed of the work roll is 18 meters per second, yeah? Um, there can be tension applied to the, um, uh, uh, exit of the strip mm? and this is the rolling force and, and these are some uh, uh, RPMs for the, the motors. Mm? So we'll concentrate on number three mm? and you'll see in a moment why we're uh, uh, interesting, interested in these numbers. Mm? Um, so th these were typically base conditions. Yeah? So if you see the base conditions are the conditions where we are working in regime, yes? And we have a strip that comes in, for instance, at this thickness, one millimeter, 0.764, yes? And the out is uh, 1.354 millimeter is out, the out uh, uh, thickness out, yes? The uh, uh, strength of the material bef when it comes in, strength when it comes out, the tension in the regime, uh, and the tension, the back, the back tension and the, and the, the front tension, yes? Okay? So, um, so, th so these would be the conditions. Uh, th th that co corresponds with a reduction of 23%. A reduction, very often in, in technology, we, you, you don't say reduction, you say draft. Yes? Then it, they don't mean beer. Draft beer, okay? They, they just mean reduction, okay? But who knows where the word comes from? Hmm? So, and, and this is really interesting. Let, look, for instance, here. The undeformed work roll diameter is 280. The actual radius in the contact area is 408. Hmm? because of the flattening, the roll flattening effect. And the forward slip is, is 1%. So the, 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 the strip has a 1.15% faster uh, velocity as the roll surface. And you, you see the roll force, yes, and then the, the, the power you need to uh, have on the shaft to, um, to get this going. Hmm? So these are the base conditions. Say, if we have 25% higher entry tension. So we pull back, we have a force on the strip going backward. What you see is, let's focus on the slip, forward slip and the roll force. You see that the forward slip decreases considerably because you're pulling back the strip and the roll force also decreases. So it's a good way of reducing roll force, yes? because you, um, you base, you're not touching anything to the, um, uh, to the exit 
uh, thickness of your strip, right? If I do 25% uh, higher exit tension, now I'm, I'm pulling the strip, what I see is, again, a reduction of the roll force, but because I'm pulling forward, I get a large increase in the uh, forward slip. Uh, what happens if my material gets harder? Yes? My material gets harder. What happens to the forwards? Well, nothing really much, yes? But the roll force will increase, okay? Another here. We increase the friction coefficient. How can you increase the fr friction coefficient in a, a, a cold mill? Well, if, if you're doing, we have poor... Uh, 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 application of uh, the uh, oils, uh, lubrication oils on the rolls. Mm? So the forward slip now increases considerably, yes, and the roll force also. Okay? All right. So um, we see that um, the uh, the, the, the rolling process is, is a rather complex thing, right? Um, and, um, and that you can have small changes in the, the parameters, yes, um, depending on the situation, yeah? Uh, because, for instance, the temperature varies, yes? Uh, so your materials properties will change. How does this affect uh, the stability of your process? Um, or your lubrication changes, right? so your, your friction coefficient changes a little bit, or this will have an impact on the process of rolling, yes? Uh, and so uh, how, is there any way, we, uh, any method uh, where we can have a, a view of, um, of how these changes, the, main, the, the, more, the major changes operate, in what directions? Okay, so, so we have, this is important, right? Th during the process you have continuous variation. Now please, these are small variations, right? In the process, you know, in industrial processes are relatively stable, but there's still variations, yes? And we want to minimize them because we have very high uh, uh, demands, very high tolerance demands on the, on the final pro product, okay? So there are variations in materials properties, size, thermal profiles, and the way the mill responds. Hmm? And this, is, this has to be taken off constantly hmm? so that the product that you make, and the important uh, parameter to look at is the exit thickness, yeah? it's fixed. You don't want to have a product that changes thickness because there's something happening to the process in terms of lubrication, uh, temperature, etc. Okay, and uh, for this we use what's called automatic gauge control, AGC, automatic gauge control. Very important, yes. And this uh, gauge control allows you to react, uh, have the process react very quickly to changes in conditions. Hmm? So, how does this work? So let's take a step back, yes. And uh, what is important to realize is that. The static roll gap, hmm? the static roll gap, that's the static roll gap. This is the roll gap that I have if there is no, no strip in the roll gap. Yes, this static roll gap is not equal to the strip exit thickness. Hmm? If, if I have, I set up a static roll gap of a certain value and I roll a material, the thickness of the material will not be equal to this distance. It will not be equal to this. Yes? Um, and there are two um, effects that influence the thickness that you do get. Yes? One of them is what we call the mill stretch or the mill modulus, and that's a uh, parameter which is which is 
related to the male properties, the, the, this, the male stand properties. And then we have an other uh, operating line which is related to the steel properties. And we call this line the plastic curve. You can also call it the stress strain curve if you want to. Um, and so, and I'll, you'll see in a moment how it works, but if you set, you have a roll gap setting without strip of S0, yes, and you have a strip N3 thickness of H0, then the uh, process will stabilize at a exit thickness and Yes, which is determined by the intersection of the mill properties and the, the mill uh, stretch and the plastic curve. Yes, and that will also determine the rolling load. Yes, so that will define the operating point of your uh, mill. So let's go, let's take a step back, see how this is being uh, put together. So first of all, um, so we, we, we put we, make a, we, we draw a y-axis and we draw an x-axis. And the x-axis, we, we simply have the, the, the thickness of the strip, right, h. And on the y-axis, the rolling load, p. Yeah, so that's the, the p here, p. Right. Okay, and this is, this is the picture here. I have a too high mill and there's no, nothing in going on here. And the, the, the distance between the surfaces of the rolls is S0. So I can put this in this diagram. When P is 0, P equals 0, yeah, I'm not doing anything, the roll gap setting without strip, that's this point. Okay, now let's um, look at our strip. Yeah? The strip at the entry of uh, the mill, so the strip is not being deformed, I'm not doing anything, right? The strip thickness H0, where do I put this? Obviously, it's, it's a point that's higher than S0. It's here. It's the strip N3 thickness, right? Again, at P0. Okay, I think that in your version, this says something else, right? You should, you should change it to entry strip thickness. H0 is, I think it says roll gap something. It, it's strip N3 thickness. Right. Sorry about the uh, typo here. Okay. Now, so we now have chosen our situation such that the bite angle uh, is, is satis condition is satisfied. So we we can we can start the rolling. Yes. And so what happens? The uh, the mill as the strip enters the roll gap, the mill will deform elastically along the mill modulus line. Yeah? Yeah? So that means that as I have, now you can see here, the, uh, um, in this case it's slab is, uh, is being rolled, yes? The, uh, the S0, yes, S0 increases, yes? So, and of course, uh, my rolling load increases. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and uh, obviously, uh, S will go to the, the right. Mm -hmm. So, the, so I, I, I move along this straight line, which has, which which looks like something like this. S one is uh, S zero plus P over S, where P is uh, this here on the y-axis, uh, and um, S is what we call the mill modulus hmm? or mill stiffness, all right? Now, uh, so, so it makes sense, right? So I, I'm starting to roll, right? Uh, the, the roll gap increases, but where is it going to stop? Obviously, it stops where, uh, at the point where you can deform the material, hmm? okay? So, so the mill modulus just tells you something about the elastic deformation of the mill, yes? And it's, it's pretty much a straight line. And the parameter, uh, this S parameter is the mill stiffness. It's 
typically something like five mega newtons per millimeter. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, now let's look at the material. Right. So we need we need the plastic curve now. Hmm? Okay. So the the rolling load. Yeah. Yes. For a specific exit thickness will be determined by the mill uh, modulus and the material properties. And these are given by a plastic curve. Yeah? And the plastic curve basically tells us how much load is required to get a certain reduction. Okay? So, um, and how, well, let's, this is a very simple experiment. Yes? How to get the, this uh, material, the curve, the plastic curve. We have a, um, the material here. It has a thickness H0. Yes? and it's at a certain temperature. And I have a tool up here and a tool down here. And I have a device to measure each this distance. Yes? Okay, so the displacement transducer and the load cell which the pressure transducer. So as I squeeze the material, yes, I will uh, reduce the thickness, yes, and my load cell will record P, yes, and my displacement transducer will record the value of H. Yes? And as I reduce the thickness, I'm squashing the material, uh, I'll need more and more force. Yes? I need force. OK, so um, this distance here, right, is the, the thickness reduction. Hmm? So, so in this case, basically, the plastic curve. And if you look at it, it's, it's um, it kind of looks like a, a, uh, a stress strain curve, except just the materials get squashed. Yeah? But it's nothing else than a, a compression displacement curve. Yes? All right? And, and here, here you have values. For instance, um, for a, a carbon steel or a higher alloy steel, which is harder, yes? um, I'm, I'm reducing the thickness. Yes? And in order to reduce the thickness, I, will, I need increasingly higher values of P, yes? Hmm? yes. And, uh, and it's not horizontal. If it were horizontal, the material wouldn't show any work hardening. But you can see I need increasingly higher pressures to, uh, to deform the material. All right. So uh, there we are. Yes? Um, the uh, the um, uh, mill will stabilize at a point which is determined by the intersection of the uh, mill modulus and the plastic uh, uh, curve. Yeah? So the ex our exit thickness will not be S0, will it be H1, yes? And the rolling load is P, okay? Okay. Right. So um, obviously, um, if, the plus, if, if we have uh, higher, uh, of course, yeah, higher rolling loads are needed if, if we increase the, the reduction, and higher rolling loads also cause more mill distortion, if you want. Hmm? Okay. So how can we use this? Hmm? How can we use this? Hmm? Uh, this diagram and, and this uh, approach yes, um, is, uh, forms the basis for this for the so the thickness exit thickness control and um, and it's it's called the gauge meter method hmm? um, and it basically tells us that because of the because the working point yes of the mill uh, determines the load and the exit thickness it means that any change in load also gives me precise information about changes in the thickness of the strip. And this method has been uh, improved, but the principle is still the same. This, for instance, a feed-forward method, uh, which, if we have time, we can we may discuss. But um, okay, which which is a develop more more modern development of this. Huh? So, for instance, um, uh, let's illustrate uh, on uh, my um, uh, figures here um, uh, how we 
we try to uh, keep the exit thickness constant, yes, if we have the following disturbance, right? Okay, what's the disturbance? Well, so say in regime, we have, we want to have this exit thickness, yes, and so we're rolling a material with this plastic curve, yes, and this rolling force. And now suddenly, suddenly, the thickness of the entry strip changes. It changes, where, where is the uh, uh, entry strip thickness? Here, this was the entry strip thickness. I'm changing it for some, some reason, and we can talk, we'll, we'll see some examples. So, and it increases, yeah? it's increasing, it goes, it goes in this direction, yes? What happens? Well, the whole plastic curve moves to the right, yes? What is my working point now? My working point is still the intersection of my plastic curve and the mill uh, modulus, so that's this point. Well, I have no problems with an increase in load, but what happens is I also have a change in my exit thickness, okay? So I don't want this to happen, right? I, okay, I want to have a s stable, uh, uh, product thickness, okay? Now how do we work? How, how do we correct for this? So we need to go back to the exit thickness that we had originally. So what, what can we do? We change the roll gap, we decrease the roll gap so that we can correct for the exit thickness. So what we have to do is decrease the roll gap our mill uh, modulus doesn't change, yes? We increase, as, yeah, so we now go back to the correct exit thickness, yes? And we have, of course, as a result, to increase the uh, rolling load, okay? And the way, the way, we, the way we detect the change in the um, uh, exit thickness, yes, is we can measure it directly by tracking the rolling load. Okay. Okay. And that's that's what the gauge method is based on. Hmm? So. Um, and of course, uh, diagram uh, can be used uh, to, um, to to look at other uh, features, hmm? uh, like uh, more unexpected effects in rolling. Hmm? For instance, um, what happens if you are um, uh, if there are changes in in rolling speeds? What is the effect of friction? what is the effect of roll tension, yes? Hmm? The example I just showed was a change in the entry, strip entry thickness, okay? Uh, so let's see um, if you have increased strip tension, you're pulling, yeah, you're pulling the strip. It's as if you have, not vertically, but horizontally, you have force to reduce the thickness, yeah? So the uh, plastic curve of the material decreases. That's the effect of strip tension. What is the effect of friction? Yeah? Friction goes the other way. It increases the uh, force needed to do the deformation. Okay? So it's, uh, it's, as it were, uh, increases the uh, plastic curve. What happens if, and this is an interesting one, if I increase the rolling speed? Hmm? When you increase the rolling speed, yes, the, this has a very strange effect. It changes the oil film thickness in the, in the bearings of your, yeah? It actually increases it, yes? And as a consequence, this reduces the roll gap. Right, and uh, so changes in 
rolling speeds yes, decrease the roll gap. Yes. And as a consequence, you get an increase in rolling load, but also decrease in the thickness of your strip. Okay? We'll talk more about this when we talk about lubrication in general and, and all kinds of instabilities that can happen during uh, rolling. All right, so, um, so what do we have to do hmm, to uh, uh, change the, the force on, my, on the rolls? Yes, we need to do this uh, with systems that will adjust this, uh, this force. And we have two systems, uh, electromechanical screw down um, systems and hydraulic uh, gauge control systems. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, and you see here the response time for a certain displacement of these uh, actuators. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, the hydraulic systems go very quickly and the electromechanical ones are much, much slower. So nowadays, uh, most modern uh, males have hydraulic automatic gauge control systems hmm, because they have much uh, faster response time. Hmm. Uh, that's what they look like hmm, uh, from the exterior. This is if they're uh, positioned uh, at the bottom. This is if they're positioned at the top hmm, of the mill stand, and uh, so if you would to if you were to cut this through, uh, uh, you, this is what you would see. Uh, you'd have a very heavy uh, cylinder body, yes, and inside this body you'd have a piston, yes, that can move up and down, and that presses yeah, with a certain force. Uh, on this, on the uh, backup roll chuck, that, that the chuck is the the construction or the element in which the the roll turns, hmm? and uh, so and, and the the pressure is transferred via this thrust plate, and and so inside here there is oil, oil. Hmm? Hmm? So this is the same cylinder. Uh, you have uh, oil here, yes. You measure. You can measure the the position and the uh, pressure, the oil pressure, and the position of the cylinder. Yes. And you can, via a, uh, a control system, change the pressure and the position of this uh, cylinder. Mm -hmm. And and if it's a hydraulic system, like oil-based system, uh, the response time is very very uh, short. Mm -hmm. If you have an electromagnetic mechanical system, yes, that is different. You have a, uh, an electrical motor which turns a warm gear and the warm gear uh, has a, makes this screw turn back and forth uh, in, in, a, uh, in a housing, yes, and so if, if you turn in one direction, it presses down. If you turn in the other direction, it reduces the pressure. Hmm? And again, uh, so, so here you have this big screw, yeah, which is threaded, and it's like a nut, and, and it moves inside this, this housing up or down, depending on uh, uh, the, uh, electrical, the way the electrical motor turns. Yes? And then again, pressure is transferred by a, a truss block on the... Um, on the chuck of the backup roll. Again, this is what it looks like in three dimensions. You can see here the electrical motor, uh, here the screw downs, and, um, and, and and this is where the pressure is applied on the on the backup roll chuck. Hmm? We'll talk a little bit more about this in, when we talk about uh, product quality. I just uh, uh, now uh, we will continue first with the hot strip mill, yes, and uh, in particular uh, the the finishing mill. Eh? So let's uh, compare now what the difference uh, between roughing, uh, rolling, rough rolling, and finishing rolling in a hot strip mill. The number of passes six to eight uh, for rough uh, rolling. 
Um, actually, it should be five. Uh, yeah, it, it kind of depends, uh, five to seven. Um, it always has to be an uneven number of passes, right? Because if you do two passes, you're back in front of the roughing mill. But um, so five to seven. Um, but this is a, a, a general uh, statement here. Um, temperatures are definitely different. Uh, roughing is above 1,000 degrees uh, for carbon steels and finishing is below 1,000, but above the transformation temperature for the steel. Typical reduction per pass is also very different. In the uh, roughing mill, we will tend to um, be um, 20 to 40 percent. In the finisher, it depends on the position in the finishing mill. You go from relatively high to relatively low um, uh, deformations. And the strain rates are very different. It's a slow strain rate in the roughing mill. And in the finishing mill, it can be very high. So you get 100 per second in the last stand of the finishing mill. The interpass time, that means the time the strip is between the two roller, two uh, deformations, is 10 to 20 seconds in the roughing mill because you're doing back and forth uh, rolling. In the finishing mill, that's a tandem mill, so the, the, the stands are in tandem, yes. Uh, the um, uh, interstand time is of the order of seconds. Hmm? So, um, when you visit a hot strip mill, it all looks uh, like nothing special, but every single uh, um, slab has a specific position in with respect to all the other slabs, yes? And the way it, it, it's being rolled is also very specific for that slab, yeah? So, and, and we call this a rolling schedule. Hmm? Yeah? And, and so that's the way in which you, 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 you roll the slabs to their final thickness. Hmm? And so the, the amount of reduction that you give per pass is defined by the entry conditions, the type of steels you have, the stands you have, yes? And the amount of, of strain you give is, in terms of true strain, order one to two. You tend to give relatively low amounts of strains at the beginning because this, the, the slab's very thick and you may get cracks or if, you do, if you do too large deformations. And towards the end, you also do smaller amounts of deformation because that has an impact on the surface quality. Um, right, uh, so uh, just to give you an example, right, um, I I if you want to know, well, how many, how many passes do w would I typically have to give to, uh, to reduce a bar, uh, excuse me, not a bar, a, um, a, uh, a slab that is 25 centimeter in thickness and reduce it to a five millimeter hot strip, yes? So uh, the total reduction, lambda total, is the initial thickness minus the n thickness divided by the n thickness, mm, because it's a reduction. Mm. And so um, you, if, um, you can set this equal to the mean reduction to the power n, where n is the, the number of passes. Mm. So if, you, if I uh, calculate this, the uh, total reduction, yes, is uh, 49, so let's say 50. Mm. So, and um, the, if the mean reduction, yes, mean reduction per pass yeah, is 1.5, then N is 10 passes. Mm. So if, if this, this is a, these are different values of lambda M, so that's the mean reduction. Yeah. Yes, and this is the total reduction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can you can calculate from this formula. Yes, 
let you watch out, this, this is a, a power law, yeah? uh, that uh, the amount of uh, uh, steps you will need. And you can see, of course, the values depend on, on the, the, the chosen situation, but it goes anywhere from around 10 to 50. Yes, and that's typically what, what you see in a hot strip mill. You get um, of the order of 10 to 15 uh, reductions, not more, not less. Okay, uh, and this is an example here. Uh, let's just concentrate uh, an actual e industrial example of the thickness variation of a slab. Yes, uh, which starts uh, around. Um, this should be uh, yes, uh, so 25 centimeters, yes? And then you go to a few millimeters towards the end of the finishing. And, and here you have a uh, uh, reversing rougher, an intermediate rougher, and finishing. And you can see uh, very, very large reductions in uh, thickness in the rougher, right? And um, in the, the finisher, the amount of reduction is much, much smaller. If you, but if you, if it's in percent, yes, uh, reduction, hmm? this is the actual thickness, right? But if you look at the reduction, yeah, the, the, the decrease in thickness relative to, uh, you, you, you actually get another picture. Hmm? You actually see that uh, the, uh, the reduction is is much larger in, in this situation at the start of the, the finisher, okay? Okay. Right, so, um, yeah, so, so, so much for uh, actual um, mill, discussion of mill stands and operations. Let's, let's uh, talk about a, a very important point, and that's the temperature and temperature control. Uh, I just told you that uh, we want to have a very stable uh, 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 process. Right? We don't want uh, process variables to change randomly. Yeah? Um, so one of the things that will influence the, the process is, for instance, the, the strength of the material. Yeah? We know that this, the strength of a steel is dependent on the temperature. A high temperature, it's softer, low temperatures. So um, any change in the strip temperature yes, will have an impact on its mechanical properties and will impact the stability of, of uh, the mill when you're, when you're rolling it. Hmm? So, and so it's important to look at the hot strip mill and, and say, well, we always have actual strain in homogeneity, for instance, at the edge. It's not very large, I agree. The strain rates is variable. We usually assume that the strain rate within the gap is constant, it's not. It changes constantly in the gap. But we also have continuous temperature changes and what's more important, temperature in homogeneity. So if you look at the temperature of the strip as you go through the, uh, the mill, this is the time here, time from exit of the reheating furnace, yes? Uh, you see, of course, that the temperature, this is the uh, temperature at the surface and then uh, below the surface at uh, one sixteenth below the thickness, one four below the thickness, um, and here is the strip middle. Yes, um, and what what you see is that the strip middle cools down much at a low, a much lower rate than the surface. Yes, and there are other things that are uh, different. Is that every time the strip surface touches a roll? Yes, it gets cooled. Yes, so you can see the roughing passes in the temperature profile of the surface because every time you touch the cold roll surface, you get a spike in the temperature. 
In the interior of the material, it's just the reverse. There, I'm deforming the material at very high strains, strain rates. I get adiabatic heating. So, in the interior of the material, the temperature actually increases during the rolling. Okay? And the temperature at the surface is very quickly regained, goes up to the, the normal temperature. Hmm? Same, this is what's for the roughing passes, and this is for the seven finishing passes. You get the same, same effect. Hmm? So, uh, on top of that, for metallurgical reasons, we will also change the temperatures of at which we do the rolling. Hmm? In particular, so in order to achieve certain uh, microstructures, we will change the strip temperature. Hmm? And we have broadly three strategies. We do either a high temperature rolling, a temperature rolling that we call normalizing, and we do thermomechanical processing. The difference is the following. High temperature rolling, we have fully recrystallized austenite, and we have grain coarsening is allowed to happen. Hmm? And eventually we obtain a coarse ferrite perlite microstructure as a consequence. When we do normalized rolling, yes, our finishing rolling temperature is much closer to the transformation temperature, gamma to alpha transformation. The grains are fully recrystallized, but the grain growth is limited, so we get a much finer smaller austenite grains and a finer ferrite perlite microstructure. If we do, when we do, uh, when we're talking about thermomechanical rolling, there we are again very close to the gamma alpha transformation, but we do the rolling in conditions where there is no recrystallization between the rolling passes and we obtain a very fine microstructure. So this is, this is basically uh, the position, temperature, rough temperature position for high temperature rolling, normalized rolling, and thermomechanical controlled processing. Okay. So when we do this, we of course imagine that it's all happening at the same temperature. Yes? Or that would be the ideal. But if you look at a... Uh, the temperature variation uh, of a um, at a bar, yes. So, if you look at the start at the head of the uh, bar, you can see the temperature there is 870, yeah? and then at the end it's 810. So there is temperature variation between head and tail, yes. Uh, in this case, about 60 degrees. And then we not only have temperature changes in the length direction, but also transverse. You can see the edges are much cooler than uh, the center part of the uh, uh, strip, yes? So we will, they will we'll put a big effort into uh, controlling the heat loss and controlling the uniformity of the temperature uh, during the, uh, the processing. So one of the ways you can control uh, this is by uh, trans uh, conserving the temperature of the transfer bar after the rough rolling, yes, and uh, by having a cover. And so you see this, here you see the, the bar, yes, going from left to right, and here it's covered by this insulating uh, material, yes? So you keep uh, 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 the heat um, close to the uh, bar. Hmm? You can also have what's called a heated transfer table, where we, we try to keep a constant bar temperature in an active fashion, and, and, and so you basically have burners that are built in the roof part of the um, 
the covers yeah, and will keep or even reheat slightly the, uh, the bar. Hmm? Uh, it's convenient to have this, for instance, if, if your, prod your product uh, the portfolio is such that uh, your material has to wait for a long time before it can be finished rolling for some technical reason, then it's good to have this active heating because you can, you know, you can keep the material for a longer time standing still. So that would be, for instance, one of the reasons uh, why. But recently, in recent years, we've had what's called coil box technologies which address this problem. And the idea is very simple. If I have a bar, a long bar, will be about five, uh, uh, 100, say 100 meter long piece of strip uh, that's uh, 23 millimeters thick and 1600 millimeters in, in width. The total surface area that radiates heat is 325 square meters. Yes? If I now would coil this up yeah, into a coil, with an outer diameter of eight, about 1,800, an inside diameter, this here, of 600. The width, of course, doesn't change. Then the total surface area has become 11 square meters. So the amount of heat radiation, heat loss, is minimized. Yes? All right? And as a consequence, you can have constant rolling temperatures yeah, and constant rolling power because the temperature of the strip doesn't change as you, uh, as you roll it. Hmm? For instance, the power uh, needed to roll a conventional uh, material will, as you roll it, increase because at the start your material is warmer than at the end, right? So the the, the mill stance will progressively, to achieve the same thickness, will have to be progressively apply a higher load. Yes? Not so if you have coil box material, because the temperature differential is much smaller. Yes? And you can see here, coil box temperature over the length of the coil, very flat. In case of a conventional system, you have a temperature difference. Yeah? These temperature differences, by the way, are of the order, if in conventional, of about 100 degrees C. So at the start, you, uh, you know, it'll be 900. At the end of the strip, it'll be uh, 800. Hmm? Take or leave a few tenths of a degree. Hmm? So what I was saying about the mill experiencing changes, yes, constantly happens if, you, if you're doing conventional rolling because the material becomes, the same material becomes progressively harder, yes? yes? So the load that you have to apply will have to change constantly to keep, to, to make sure you have a product that comes out with a constant thickness, all right? And this, so the coil, coil box improve things yeah? a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a coil box here. You can see uh, it's basically a coiler. Yeah? And uh, you coil this thick bar on this, this, uh, this coiler. It allows you to uh, tr uh, conserve the, the heat and also not only conserve it, but also homogenize the heat. Uh, yes. Uh, for some products which have a high added value, yes, we will have coil box furnaces where we, we put the whole uh, coil bar into a furnace to really have in a very, very stable and uniform temperature. That's a very expensive solution and it's only used for... Uh, stainless steels, expensive products. Hmm? The other advantages, uh, another advantage of the, the coil box is that uh, because you don't have to have uh, room for an uncoiled transfer bar, yes, 
uh, the size of your hot strip mill can be smaller. Hmm? But big disadvantages, of course, is investments, operation, and maintenance of the coil box. You can imagine that's a very uh, rather complex piece of mechanics that has to work at 1,000 degrees C, yes, constantly, yes, uh, so uh, that, that is um, uh, going to be uh, expensive investment, uh, but not only an investment, but also you need to keep it in operation and maintain it, right, constantly. Hmm? Uh, there are uh, uh, recent years have been uh, even better systems uh, of coil boxes. Whenever you coil something on a mandrel, yes, this is the mandrel here, the central axis, yes, uh, the mandrel will be cold, yes, and so the part of the strip, yeah, the part of the, the bar rather, that's in contact with the mandrel will be colder as a consequence, yes. So uh, people have developed systems where wi without mandrels, where you can coil the material without a mandrel, and th that gives you uh, an even better temperature homogeneity. Hmm? Mandrelless coiling, and, uh, but you do need a rather um, complex system. You see, in the past, when you have a mandrel, you could go from a coiling position to the uncoiling position by means of the mandrel. In, in the mandrelless situation, you need a more complex uh, s transfer system uh, to, um, to transfer the, the coil from the coiling to the uncoiling position. Hmm? Um, the coil box um, prevents uh, loss of heat and reduces inhomogeneity in um, the strip temperatures. You may have noticed on the um, infrared picture I showed earlier that the edges of the strip are actually also cooler than the, the central part of the strip. To address that problem, uh, some lines ha install uh, edge heaters. And those are usually induction heaters, yes, um, which only heat the, uh, the edge of the, uh, of the bar to have a, 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 a homogeneous uh, uh, temperature and, a, and, and to compensate the heat loss at the edge of the, uh, of the bar. Mm -hmm. So it's induction heating. So this, the induction produces eddy currents in the strip and, and these eddy currents uh, will give you, you heating of the strip. It's, it's non contact and it's very localized. So that is the reason why we like to use induction heating. Okay, this is an induction, some parameters here. The advantage also is that you can use induction heating on a moving strip, yes, because it's very uh, fast heating. Hmm? What happens before we go into the finishing mill? Well, we need to remove the tail part, excuse me, the head and the tail part of the uh, strip because uh, you may remember that very often the bar, the transfer bar will have this shape and so you need to have a flat head and a flat tail part so you remove these with a, uh, a shear, yes, so the shear knives uh, uh, very often they, they're, so they're mounted on a drum so that you, you shear off the, the head and the tail of your bar while it's moving, yes? Mm -hmm. So, so it, it moves, it rolls into position with the strip and then cuts off the, um, uh, the bar. It's, it, the profile is very important because you don't want any part of the, the cut of the shear to, to stick out and damage the, the rolls, of course, yes, okay. 
and, and this is an example here. You can get some details of the, uh, these uh, rotary um, shears at the entry of the um, um, finishing mill. The width of your strip can vary, yes, in order to direct the strip perfectly in the middle of your, your finishing mill. You have entry guides to the, uh, to the, uh, the mill that's here. Mm -hmm. So the, the strip moves nicely uh, where you want it in the, um, at the entry of the mill. And the mill equipment itself, what do we try to do in the cold uh, mill is to uh, uh, have the right finishing temperature on exit, have the right thickness. Strip width is usually not a big uh, issue, but strip profile is a very big issue. Mm -hmm. That's the cross-sectional shape of the strip. And you want to avoid all kinds of problems like cobbles, yes? which are usually, which are due to uh, mill instabilities and problems with the control of the mill. And here you see uh, a cobble right in front of a, um, I think, a, 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 a coiler, yes? That means what, what has happened here is that the coiler velocity of rolling is too small for the exit velocity of the strip and the whole strip comes out of the mill and doesn't get coiled, it's really bad. This, these are cobo, please remember this word, it's like nightmare in a plant, yes? That's where you have a control instability in your mill, yes? And the material accumulates uh, out of the mill and goes all over the place, yes? And you can't do anything because it's very fast and it's very dangerous, yes? And it's very hot. So um, in order to avoid this uh, is the control of the process is very important and the, so we use a hydraulic gauge control adjustment and then improvements in the um, um, strip profile is done by roll bending, CVC, and cross rolled. We'll talk about this. And then in order to avoid things like these uh, cobbles, we also have what's, what are called uh, loopers. Hmm? Uh, even in the finishing mill, we have um, temperature changes that we can't do anything about in the thickness, of course. It doesn't matter how, how perfectly the, you do the thickness control. In the finishing mill, here you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stands, yes. You can see the temperature at the surface has a peak downward uh, because it, it goes, it's in contact with the co cooled, I should say cooled uh, roll surface. In the interior, I have adiabatic heating, so I get heating of the strip. Hmm? And, and so the mean temperature of the strip is, is somewhere here. Hmm? Okay, let me skip this one here. Right, uh, I, th I think this, uh, this will be the, the last slide um, and I'll, I'll come back to this on uh, next lecture. But so um, in, in conclusion today, it's uh, important is that you realize that when we make a product, yes, what you basically want to have is uh, high product quality yeah? and that means uh, one of the things that means is we have we want to have constant perfectly constant thickness that's a minimum we'll see the next step is also to have a perfectly constant strip profile so that the profile of the thickness distribution in the width is constant yes and today we've seen that any uh, variation in temperature in materials properties uh, will have an impact on the thickness, yes? And that you can control this by uh, uh, gauge control mechanisms, 
which respond very quickly and effectively to any instability in the mill. Okay? All right, so we'll continue uh, with the, the, the cold, uh, the, the finishing mill uh, next time, and we'll also wrap up the discussion of the hot strip mill at the same time. Uh, thank you. <laughs>